back again back in the car with the camera rolling for the second time today now you may not know that but well it's whatever it doesn't even fucking matter cardio video yesterday followed by arms today so I know I'm kind of kind of teasing at you because who wants to see the cardio video it's all just car talk yapping but worth mentioning worth mentioning for sure so plan for arms just pump them up the hell and do some hard sets pretty simple approach pretty basic approach you know what we're uh, we're gonna break it down to the common denominator curls as well as push downs I am um, I'm gonna stay away from machine dips you know I'm gonna stay away from that dip machine I, okay maybe I'll try it maybe but the reason that I say I would probably want to stay away from it is because it kind of gets a lot of pec activation. And apart from on an actual chest day where I do want to do some light activation, some light work just to actually you know, keep, get some blood flowing in here, not just leave this stagnant to kind of really tense up. Uh, other than that, I do not want to work my chest at all. So if I can hop on the dip machine and I get a lot of chest activation and it kind of starts to feel a little funky, a little extra tight, a little, I mean, let's just say bad. Not good. Not an awesome situation to be in. So instead, I'll stick to what doesn't bother me, peck wise. You know, single arm push downs, maybe some rope, maybe some straight bar. Even straight bar, I'd want to be a little bit careful. I wouldn't want to go insanely heavy, just because even though it's a tricep movement, you can still get a little bit of chest activation. That's kind of, um, the existence of chest is almost the bane of tricep isolation in a way. Because it's hard to hit your tries without just a touch of chest activation. So, either way, it's still going to be good. I'll just bounce around a couple of movements, which, I mean, really are just ones where I'll see it. Or I'll see a handle and say, okay, this machine's open. This machine's open. I like this, but that guy's using this handle, so I guess I'll do this. That's pretty much the thought process going in in my mind, or going on in my mind whenever I pick some movements, which it's not like I really do it consciously. That's just kind of, you know, what ends up happening. I don't have a completely rigid routine, and that's partially just due to the fact that I'm not training in a highly controlled environment, you know? And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but if you're going to public gyms a lot, then if you have a really rigid routine, then you may not be setting yourself up for failure, like not that bad, but you're definitely setting yourself up for inconvenience. You know, because what happens if somebody's on your machine? What happens if you do three sets of incline bench and then you have it written down in your routine? I need to do two sets of pec deck, but the pec deck is taken. You know, if you stick to that rigid, like you have to do pec deck next, you can't do anything else then what are you going to just sit there and wait 10 minutes for the guy to be done? Now, you could ask him to work in. Uh, this kind of brings up another weird situation. Some public gyms are just, feels kind of weird to ask people to work in. I don't know, I'm spoiled. College rec center, I'll see fucking eight dudes on the same, on the same leg extension doing like a real fucking rapid rotation. Some gyms, it's like the vibe just isn't there. It's a hop into somebody else's space which is a little bit unfortunate but yeah what are you going to do just sit there and wait probably lose your pump probably get out of the zone and then by the time you actually do get it you're kind of cold so your sets aren't going to be you know really as good as you can get so in that instance i say it's way better to be a little bit more fluid you know heck deck's taken whatever man do cable flies cable flies taken just fucking do some other shit now if everything is fucking taken absolutely everything then you just <laughs> I don't want to say force your way in but that's when you really got to make sure like okay I'm working in with this guy no matter what maybe not no matter what but you know what I'm saying <clears throat> so luckily enough with arms for me um, I never really have a problem there because I can kind of use whatever right? I mean cables are always opening up and then for buys, really, I mean, if I had to pick one piece of equipment for to 
only use for the rest of my fucking life for bicep development, what do you think I'm going to pick? I guess this is multiple pieces of equipment since there's different weights, but I'm just going to pick fucking dumbbells. There's straight bar curls, there's like, I like doing kind of underhanded bicep bias pull downs on the cables. I like preacher machines, I like machine curls where you sit down, the curl is in like a locked range of motion. But if I had to pick one end all be all, dumbbell curl is going to put some mass onto your buys. I guarantee it. Well, actually, I don't guarantee it. If you actually go hard with dumbbell curls, there we go, a little bit of a misconception. You got to actually go hard with them, and then you'll get the results. You know, no point doing a fancy pants, half supinated, three second concentric, five second eccentric cable curl with three RIR. Just grab the 50s, do it until you can't fucking do a complete rep, rack them, take a minute, and do it again. Like, which one of those approaches sounds better? The real technical one or just the fucking, you know, the good one? Now, that's not rhetorical. You know, some people like being very, very technical and specific with their lifts. And then other people are, let's just say, more freakishly inclined. So, either way, this is going to be a quick one. I mean, I guess for you, it'll look the same as normal. But for me, I'm going to try not to chit chat too much so let's uh let's just get in there get started and then fast forward probably maybe 45 minutes an hour jump in front of a mirror and say um what do you think what do you think we get prob i've got probably i mean probably a million phrases but let's uh let's just list them off i mean we got holy shit oh my fucking god just laughing and then um What's another one? What is it? That's freaky. There we go. Those four. Which one do you think is going to come up? I guess we'll have to watch and see. Okay. Standard starter for tries as of late. You know, if you go back a couple, well, a couple of months, the first movement I would always do for tries was like fucking heavy ass pushdowns, like whole stack plus like three plates. I've kind of been liking starting tries a little lighter, squeezing style. Like this set isn't going to be hard because of the weight itself. It's going to be hard because at the top of every rep, I'm going to seriously fucking squeeze. Like I'm trying to bend my arm backwards past, you know, straight. And then, of course, a little bit of partials at the end too. One more, I think. Let's change it up. I think straight bar, but I'm not really sure. Let me think about it for a minute. All right, I lied. Feel a rep reveal that dips feel okay. So moderate weight, a little bit less than the whole stack. And then same thing with those single arm extensions, really flex at the bottom. Like 
I'm talking one second hold, at least when I'm strong in the beginning. One more, maybe two actually. Yay! Okay. A little too heavy. Let's make it a drop set. Let's, uh, let's get some straight bar going. We're done with this. Basic premise, heavy as I can go, hard as I can go. As simple as it needs to be. Come on. Yeah, yeah. There's something to some heavy ass push downs with a tricep pump. One or two more, and tries are done, man. Let's do a little rest pause. Just a few second break and then bust a few more reps out. One more here and then we can start some curls. Let's grab some dumbbells. It's been a while since I curled the 80s. Of course I warmed up. Come on. Oh! <sighs> 
Oh, no way. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, in my mind, there was no possibility of one more rep. Let's leave it there. One big ass, let's call it a primer for buys. Let's move on to some light squeezing weight. Lighter at least. Okay, same thing, except this time with the 60s. One more, same weight. Let's go do some seated machine curls. Yeah, machine curls ought to feel fucking sweet now. The volume on vibes might be kind of short today. After those three sets of dumbbell curls, I already feel fucking cooked. <sighs> 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 I'm satisfied with that first portion of the set. I didn't feel like a fucking drop would be any more beneficial. Woo. Let's check the pump and roll, man. We're done. All right, I lied. I want to do one more. Now, this will be the last one. Now I'm fucking satisfied. Okay. Arms are officially freaking done. I forgot the measuring tape. Even though I said I wouldn't forget. Not cool. Not cool on my end. But the fact that I can't touch my, uh, I can't touch my shoulders with my fingers. That is cool. That part actually is pretty cool. So. Let's see how we're looking underneath the hood before we scramble out of here. Boy. Ooh. Doing those really heavy curls, I was starting to feel it in my back. Not in like an old man, you know, hurt lumbar. I'm just talking about since I think it must have been those um, uh, T-bar rows from yesterday's back day. But my lower lats were like firing every time I leaned back to curl the weight. <laughs> those just on that really heavy set though. A little on the 60s. So let's uh, let's run through a couple here. Mm. 
Oh my goodness. Whew. Holy shit. I literally felt like I was going to fucking pass out after that one. I got that kind of lightheadedness. No, oh my God. Oh, dude, it's fucking hard to flex. But what do you think? Got a decent amount of freaking meat on these limbs? I would certainly say so. But as we're all aware, never enough. Let's get in the fucking car. All right. This is a goddamn dream come true. Good ass arm pump, hard sets. Listening to the uh, the opening to Baki, Beastful, on uh, not loop, but I definitely play that for at least like four sets. <sighs> Holy fuck, is this thing trying to kill me? Oh, maybe not exactly, but still. Uh, yeah. So, lift done. I'm ready to eat some fucking food. I'm ready to get back to the crib and chow down. So, nothing else to update, man. Nice and full of carbs. Tri is pumped, bias pumped. I'm ready to replenish some of that glycogen I just burned off when I get back and eat some kind of something. I got a bag of Skittles sitting on my desk. I'm sure that's gonna, you know, fucking disappear in no time. So, uh, fuck, man. I mean, what else is new with you? Been hitting the gym. You haven't been taking too many rest days unnecessarily. Been maybe even tracking your macros. Oh, sweet man, that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. So, if that all sounds like a fucking hassle to you, in a way it is. But the more you do it, the more it just becomes a habit. Honestly, I don't even think about tracking my macros anymore. It's like, it's just second nature. It's like I was born doing it. So I came on. How many grams of formula was that? Okay. Okay, cool. Sweet. You get what I'm saying? And you don't even have to look all this shit up. The longer you do it, I mean, you kind of get an eye for this sort of thing. Or uh, maybe not even an eye, but you can kind of judge based on looking at food with reasonable accuracy what the macros are. Right? If somebody slapped a hamburger patty, or no, no, like a straight up hamburger in front of me, I could look at the thickness of the beef, maybe the size of the bun, kind of just see how greasy it is. And I could probably pump out some numbers within, I don't know, I don't know what the terms are, but probably within at least 30% accuracy of the actual number. You know, I'd be like, that's a pretty big bun. I'd say that's about 40 grams of carbs. That's a pretty thick patty, but you know, not a half pound or anything. I'd say 30 grams of protein, maybe 35 fat and it's got some mayo on it and it's kind of greasy too I'd say probably 25 that's just you just kind of get into that little zone you know I can uh, I feel like I'm making too many matrix references but you sort of start to see food in a different way and I wouldn't say a different way I'd I'd honestly say a better way you know a lot of people don't like the idea of dieting and they don't like the idea of tracking macros because they don't want to change their perception of food. They don't want to look at food and see numbers, right? Because they're, I mean, people are emotionally attached to certain kinds of meals and whatnot. Hey, I mean, let's just look at the current state of body fat distribution. Right? So if that's the case, it would make sense that people wouldn't want to track their macros because then instead of seeing a nice bowl of mac and cheese and you're like, oh, this is sweet, I love this. You see 80 grams of carbs and 35 grams of fat and maybe 8 or 10 grams of protein. And, I mean, people don't want to look at it like that. But in the context of changing your body's, uh, let's just say your body's composition, that's the only way to fucking do it. In my reasonably informed opinion. Right? So, take with that what you will. But, yeah. When will the next cut begin? Well, obviously, it'll be once this bulk ends, but don't worry. We are not even close to the end state. This bulk's gonna keep bulking on. 
So don't, uh, if you're on a bulk too and you're worried that I'm going to end mine before you and then I'm going to be dining when you're bulking, don't worry, man. We are in this for a long haul. We got to pack on some serious mass, the likes of which should make my chest look fuller, shoulders more capped, arms more rounded over, thighs thicker, calves veinier. Abs are going to stay the same. That's actually kind of a good transition. Why don't I train abs? Where's the ab day? Once you have them, you don't really have to fucking work them. You know? And that's not to say, like, oh, I can kind of see my abs. That means they're good. It's like, with abs, you really do reach a level of development where there's just no need for any more. And if anything, to if I were sitting here doing a crazy ab day, like, even once a week, I mean really hard, like hard-ass sets, honestly, I feel like you're just kind of thicking up my stomach. You, know? you don't need your abs to be, like as big as your fucking chest. Right? Once they're big enough to be well separated and you can really see the gaps between them and whatnot, right? they're well defined, then you know, working them isn't gonna do you much good. I mean, I'm not gonna, look, it's probably fine to work them, but as far as I can tell, once they're there, your abs get worked just in day-to-day -day life and in lifts enough to be maintained with, I mean, fucking, minimal risk of atrophy. I don't think my abs are going to fucking start shrinking down anytime soon. Because every time I do a heavy set of tricep pushdowns, right, I'm bending over on the weight, abs are coming into play. Every time I'm doing standing dumbbell curls, I'm kind of, you know, my body's sort of leaning back and forth with load, abs are coming into play. Every time I do a squat and you have a big brace, abs are coming into play. Every time you, you know, walk in the bathroom and you see yourself in the mirror and you flex your abs, abs are coming into play. So... It's, um, you kind of have to look at it with an actually accurate, let's just call it scope. You know, because obviously we all know abs are, abs are built in the kitchen, man. You got to get lean to show them off. But, you know, that's in tandem with they have to be developed enough to, you know, actually stick out once you get lean. I've seen dudes who are fucking diced, and even when they flex, their stomach's just fucking flat as shit because they have no ab development. So, and this isn't a roast, but, you know, if that's kind of like you and you don't think that your abs are really poking out, then throw them in, right? But once they're developed, they're not going anywhere. No need to worry, which is kind of nice. One less muscle to hit. Not that I don't like hitting them. And I still throw them in every so often, especially when I'm dieting down, just because, you know, when I'm in a cut, I'm not going to gain any muscle. So I just kind of like doing it to, you know, because an ab pump is kind of cool, especially when you're lean. So that's uh, that's my stance on that matter. But home, food, food, more snowfall, food, sleep. Perfect ender to a solid ass arm day. So I will see you next time for whatever that video is going to be.